achievement depends on two things, talent and effort. And we've seen a lot of people that have talent or potential. And what they lack is the effort. And ultimately to achieve things, you've got to have put those two ingredients together. Trick question for you. <laughs> what is longer, 15 minutes of regular video or 15 minutes of recorded video? Well, this could be a challenging one for me, Kev, but since we just went through it before now and you just want to use it as an example to make fun of me, I figured it would take longer than 15 minutes to watch it in slow-mo. But one of the common things that a lot of our clients and people say is, you know, muscle weighs more than fat, right? And it's like, no, a pound of muscle is the same as a pound of fat. Just looks really different on your body. Muscle's a lot more attractive. Fat's a lot more fluffy. Not to mention all of the things that can be challenging with the actual health aspects of carrying more body fat than what would be considered healthy for an individual. But no, a pound is a pound. And 15 minutes is 15 minutes. So Awesome. Thank you so much. Do you want to talk about uh, the exciting week we've had with children this week? Oh my goodness. I don't know if any other parents have this feeling, but when the office line rings through for our kids' school, yes, it's a saved number in my phone. It's usually one of two thoughts. One, someone's injured and now we need to go back to school and probably take them to the doctors. Um, With three boys, it's amazing how many times we've had injuries happen or someone's in trouble with a behavior issue. Now, our youngest son, um, who shall remain nameless... (laughs) loves to call home for all kinds of random things. And so therefore I get like a weekly call from him generally asking questions that could be saved until the end of the day. And so today the office line rang through and there it was again, asking about a birthday party at five o'clock tonight that we could have discussed at three fifteen. Pretty um, sure he makes a weekly visit to the school nurse. I don't know if they, if they have a punch card or something a little like bit more. this. <laughs> when he was little, I think they were giving him snacks. I don't think they give the snacks anymore, but you know, like, Oh, I just need to go to the nurse and get some crackers. Yes. So actually we have, that's my second call for this week because the call on Monday was that this child jumped over a chair in class, which we still need to discuss like why he was doing that and landed on a pencil, which shot through a pair of thick Nike sold tennis shoes or a thick sold Nike pair of tennis shoes and straight up into his foot. But luckily no lead was stuck. It's already on the mend. And uh, he had a stellar basketball game a couple of days ago. So he's doing just fine. Tough kid. Very tough kid. A little yep. foolish at times. A little melodramatic. And actually, he is probably our grittiest, certainly of our boys, our grittiest. And we're talking about today building the grit mm-hmm. to keep going. So we'll uh, we'll chat about him in a second. Yeah. Ha- growing up with two older brothers, it certainly helps. You're going to have to be tough or get run over in our house um, on accident sometimes. So, okay. So we want to talk a little bit about being gritty. And maybe you guys have heard some of these statistics before, but seven out of 10 of you so this is about you potentially, have already quit on their goals. Wow, that's challenging when we think about the fact that it's very early March. Um, In my mind, spring is just coming. And um, it's sad to think that we might have already quit on some of our goals. Research shows 68% of people bail on New Year's Eve goals, or excuse me, New Year's goals by February 1st. But we don't believe you're listening to this because you're in the 70%. So our point is, if you're listening, you're probably in that 30%. There we go. Who has not yet That's, given up on your goals and you're not going to. Most people are quick to quit on themselves. And boy, that's like really hard to hear. But when you think about it, it is easy to quit. And um, we watch it in our kids. I know we fight it in ourselves. And so even when you see people that you would say are successful, I think people don't consider the fact that those successful people still have to contend against the mindset of quitting. So one of the questions that we heard from a mentor a while back and it's really stuck with us is what does it take, ladies and gentlemen, for you to lose your discipline? I'm going to say that again. What does it take for you to lose your discipline? And I know I've been reflecting on this question and I think, okay, when do I feel a lack of discipline? Um, Definitely when I'm overtired, not enough sleep, um, high stress times, when we're having challenges with kiddos, um, whether it's just inconveniences like yesterday, Evie dumped it dumped an entire cup of hot chocolate on the table on two chairs right before school. Um, and some of those moments, you know, it's easy to just say like, forget it. I'm just going to grab something less, uh, more convenient to eat. That's less healthy, or I'm not going to do the work that I was planning to do when I get home. I'm just going to lay down and take a nap. And I think for me, I just recognize those things in myself more. So my barometer is reset now to track a lot of those mindsets and it helps me not shift 
so quickly into quitting on things that I might have done earlier in life. What about you? Well, the, one of the things that we talk about cues a lot of times with our, our clients in our coaching business and, or cues probably triggers is a better word. Yeah. So just reflecting back on my life, like just as an example, um, early on in my health journey, if you were gone, mm. that was one of those things, areas where I would forfeit my discipline. Um, you know, I could be really on point with my, I was more focused on the diet aspect back then. Now I've really brought in the fitness component. When you say diet, you mean like the nutritional The aspect. nutritional, yeah. yeah. Not as in a diet no. um, type of thing, but my daily eating habits. But when you were gone, it was just easy to kind of do the easy thing mm -hmm. um, and, you know, quote unquote, have a little dad fun when we, you know, it was just me and the three boys and, and eat lots of junk food. And so just recognizing that even though that behavior didn't support my goals at the time, it was easy for me to forfeit my discipline. And, you know, with just people we work with and the, all of you listening, you know, think about what are those cues? What are those triggers? What are those uh, you know, there's another acronym, HALT, uh, Hungry, Angry, Lonely, Tired. Mm. Uh, I was in a men's group and they talked about that typically when we make poor decisions, whether it's uh, delving into pornography or an affair or addictions, alcohol, drugs, and things like that, uh, that a lot of times the trigger is one of those four things. And certainly, uh, in, I, I think most people, if you go back, you can identify one of those four things being present when you forfeit discipline in your life. That's really good. Cause actually, as you were sharing about, you know, me being gone, I would say another moment for me and a lot of the clients that we work with is those evening hours. You know, when you get through the day and you're super disciplined, like for me, sometimes my day starts at four 15 in the morning. Um, and I have a regimen and a commitment to the, what I put in my body, how I treat my body. And then by the end of the day, sometimes it's like, I just would love a drink, whether it's a glass of wine or whatever, or I just want to veg for the rest of the evening. And so sometimes it's just even treating that discipline like a battery that wears out throughout the day. And the later we get into our day, um, especially if our day has been full and we haven't had those rest periods or we haven't surrounded ourselves with healthy people, um, I think it's a lot easier to forfeit our discipline. So just being aware is like a huge part of this. I think many of us are not aware and we just lose the discipline. We don't know why or how. And so if we back that to the upstream issue, it's really, you know, what leads me to that mindset and how can I break that chain along the way? So let's talk about, you know, some of the grittiness that you've shown in your life. Obviously you have a lot of grit. It's one of the things I admire about you, but um, the Marine Corps was a season where you had to really contend for a lot of things to be a Marine. Yeah. And uh, all my fellow Marines out there, Semper Fi. Absolutely. Uh, and thank you for your service. Absolutely. Best country to serve by far. Mm. Uh my experience, and one of the reasons that I chose the Marine Corps was just because I wanted that challenge. Um, I did not get to play uh, high school football, which is something I always wanted to. I was homeschooled for ninth and 10th grade, went to a small private school for 11th and 12th. They didn't have uh, a tackle football team, and it was always my favorite sport. And I remember having friends that would talk about their two a days and just the grueling practices that they had and always kind of a little bit jealous of that kind of that, that manhood test. Mm. And so that was one of the reasons that really drove me ultimately to the Marine Corps because outside of special forces, forces, the Marine Corps is, you know, known for being the most challenging boot camp experience. Now I ended up going the officer route, which is a little bit different, but my understanding Officer Candidate School compared to uh, regular boot camp is actually a little more physically challenged, not as much as the uh, mindless discipline that they do on the enlisted side, just like some ridiculous things mm -hmm. that still take a tremendous amount of grit. Uh, but not having had any type of grueling physical challenge prior to going to OCS, I, I really didn't know if I was going to finish. But what I was committed to was not quitting. And it was a very challenging time. I wasn't great with my time management. Uh, I averaged probably four hours of sleep. I was always one of the last guys uh, to go to bed. And I know you're thinking of maybe, oh, this is why some of our other kids do this, right? But, um, uh, but it was, no it was a absolutely grueling 10 weeks. But 
uh, I was, you know, thrilled to graduate. And it just took that decision that, uh, that I wasn't going to quit. You know, they could kick you out if you weren't performing. And there was a surprising number. Mm. I would say, I want to say probably 10 to 20% of the candidates that would quit or they, at least they wouldn't finish. And a surprising number actually requested to quit. Um, and even though I didn't know that I was going to make a career out of it or even accept my commission, I just was absolutely determined that I was going to do my part. And, you know, if I did my part and couldn't finish, it, so be it. But I was going to do my part. And I did graduate and ended up accepting the commission after I graduated. So very proud of you, dear. And um, I would say one of the grittiest times for me outside of college and graduate school, because there was a lot of late nights and um, went to summer school, to summer school to finish one year of grad school. Um, and that was just a time with, again, very little sleep and a lot of just commitment to finish was really building our business in the early days. So when I started coaching back in 2011, our boys were three, two and two months old. And Kevin was working as a full-time police officer. He worked a lot of hours of overtime to really fill in the gaps in our budget. And um, for me, that was just a time where once I realized what I had in my hands and I started to really fall in love with it, it was like, I'm going to make this work come hell or high water. There's, you know, times where I was coaching early in the morning, late at night, um, sometimes in our pantry, <laughs> we have pictures of, you know, I was making dinner and everyone was quiet and I might be listening to a training or on a call with someone and somebody comes in, you know, snot running down their face crying or somebody got in an argument and I'd run into the pantry to try to finish the call quietly and then you know, go back to being mom. And so I think just juggling all of the parts of that part of our journey um, early on, especially before we were partnering. And even once we partnered together, like that was a season and it continues to be a season to contend. But here's the thing with contending guys, when you know why you do it and you know the value of it and you can see what you're working towards, then it's a lot easier to be gritty. So I think some people are just, they're missing the vision for themselves about why they would push through in certain areas. Yeah. And as we kind of reflect on the coaching and just our, our experience working with people over the last 12 years, and really uh, even going back to our early years of marriage and seeing some of the, the marriages that didn't make it, uh, that regardless of what your dreams, goals, and visions are, you're going to need grit to accomplish those things. I would say it's the most significant factor is that determination to contend at all costs for something that has value. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, we've talked about this, some things you do need to quit, but more often than not, people know what they need. They know what's good for them. They know what they want. They know where they need to go, but what they lack is that grit. So there's a great book out there. It is uh, called Grit appropriately Shocking. named by Angela Duckworth. Absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. And in this book, she really reveals how that grit is the determining factor of top performance. I know that there's a story, I can't remember if it's in a book or maybe a 30 for 30, but it talks about, I believe it was Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant right? It was, I think the dream team or one of the Olympic teams where- Any one of the above examples. Absolutely. Where they're coming back from, um, you know, they're at practice. Oh yeah. They're coming back after a long night of hitting the clubs. It's like four o'clock in the morning and they're heading up to their rooms and Kobe Bryant is headed down to the gym. Mm -hmm. And Was it in that book or was it um, winning by Tim Grover? It, it could have been winning by Tim Grover, trying oh. to give credit to where credit's There we go. Due. We're not quite sure, but the story was likely true and quite impactful. But that is, you know, there's so many people and even people talk about like Larry Bird, how he's one of the greatest basketball players, but not really a naturally gifted athlete. Right. Uh, and it was just the fact that I think I heard that he shot 500 free throws every single morning before school. I uh, can't remember if it was him or someone else I heard that would literally want walk or run to school dribbling a basketball. And that is the grit that allows top performers mm -hmm. to get there. Lots of people have the natural skills, but they lack the grit. Um, Angela talks about the fact that achievement depends on two things, talent and effort. And we've seen a lot of people that have talent or potential. And what they lack is the effort. 
And ultimately to achieve things, you've got to have put those two ingredients together. Absolutely. And it says in the book that effort is factored twice because it builds skill and it makes skill productive. And we've seen that in a lot of areas of our life, you know, that when you put that effort forth, that's what's going to happen is you're going to develop a skill and then you're going to get better at the skill to the point where then you can produce things from it, whether it's producing more health or producing something in your business, better relationships with your kids. Right. So if you're naturally skilled in something and you don't put in the effort, other people very well could pass you by. Like we see this in sibling sets on a regular basis where you have someone who has tremendous natural skill, but they lack the effort and other people who lack the natural skill, but they put in that effort and then they continue to put that effort in, which makes their skills even more productive. Yep. So talent is natural, skill is developed by hours of working your craft. And so, you know, we, we've said it's a healthy thing to quit things that do not serve you well, but for things that do serve your life, when we think about the domains of our lives and the way we want to be well-rounded people, there are lots of areas of life where we do want to work our craft. Again, personal health, mindset, relationships, finances, and business. And that's going to take time consistently and, um, and that effort. Yeah. And we would just encourage everyone to understand that you're going to be very limited on how many things you can be great at. You know, obviously you, you like to point out that I have a lot of interests and, um, I love playing guitar. I enjoy golfing. Uh, we're in the process of selling our boat, but I enjoyed wakeboarding when we did that. But I've also really just understood that I'm not willing to put in the effort and I really don't have the time. I'm willing, to, not willing to prioritize the time it takes to become a great wakeboarder or a great golfer. Uh, you know, I made, I'm, I'm pursuing my pilot's license this year and basically told you like golf is going to take a major back seat and um, my score, my handicap is probably going to go the wrong direction, but it is what it is. And it's important to understand that you have to be very cautious about where you focus effort. Um, I love this point is that without effort, your talent is unmet potential. Wow. There's so many people that have unbelievable potential, but they don't put in the effort. I mean, we have seen that coaching people that just have great personalities. They have large spheres of influence and just unbelievable potential, but they don't put in the effort and it's really sad. I would say there's few things that are more sad and disappointing to see people with that unmet potential. Totally agree? agree. Absolutely. And in parenting, it's interesting because obviously we're raising kids that are still at the very early stages. And I think sometimes when I look at our kids and I see potential, and then I also see a lack of effort in certain areas, it's like, hard not to want to give them the buck up speech and that you can do this and let's get to this next level. Because I think a lot of parents are parenting their kids out of things that they either missed out on or did and really enjoyed in their own lives. And there's a balance, I think, between pushing our kids towards their best selves and also affirming how God created them and allowing them to feel at peace with growing up. Sometimes I think that um, I, we forget what it was like to be the age of our kids and so, you know, when I look at their rooms, when I look at their behavior, when I look at their attitude and we're expecting more from them because of how we raise them, it's like, wait a minute, we're how we are now because of a lot of time and development and maturity. And we're going to need to give them that time to get to their best selves. Not that we're arrived. We're very much in progress. Yeah. And one of the things that we talk about a lot is just this analogy of society and culture flowing downstream. Um, you know, you can imagine a bunch of different boats that are all filled with people and that is society and culture as a whole there. They don't even have to drop their oars into the water because there's enough of a current going downstream and, and understand that the downstream path is the easy path. Right. That is the path to, uh, to ultimately disease, obesity, and, uh, premature death. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the path to poor finances, uh, Poverty versus abundance, uh, debt versus really thriving. Uh, it's to the path to dysfunctional families, to divorce, uh, you name it. All the, the maladies of this life is the path of 
ease. And top performers row against the current almost constantly. Now, we understand that at some point you're going to need a break, but what we want to challenge everyone with is to understand that you've got to contend. Don't quit. Now, sometimes there is some technique involved. So you might be rowing mm -hmm. and um, you, know, you get some coaching and say, hey, here's a more efficient way to do it. And so, you know, when you're constantly having to start over, you have to ask yourself, okay, what did I do wrong? What am I missing? What are the habits, either the old, bad, unproductive habits that I'm going back to, or what are the new habits that I need to replace things with? Uh, but don't ever let people mock you and discourage you for trying again. Once again, it's important, you know, like we talked about ready, aim, fire. If you're missing, figure out why you're missing. Right. But don't quit taking the shot. Um, we've talked about this in, in our experience, people fail to reach their goals when they take their oars out of the water using that analogy. And if you're going to be a top performer, uh, you are in a boat, you're going upstream, you're going against the current and everyone else is going the other way. They're looking at you. They're probably laughing at you. They're, you know, those are the people coming up, going up to their room at four o'clock in the morning when you're going down to the gym at four o'clock in right. the morning, they're going to be like, what's your problem? But they're at some point, some of them might want to join your boat. The reality is most people won't. And then the other thing is that they stop running with top performers. We talk about this all the time, but your community, your influences your is so important. Absolutely. Yes. Um, how have you seen that play out, Beck? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that when you have relationships with people who don't desire to improve areas of their life, whether it is their marriage, their relationship with their kids, their personal health, their mindset, how they problem solve, you know, we could go on and on. Then it's only a matter of time until you stay in that zone. Or if you've grown up and out that you get pulled back and down. Um, and I know that there's some scripture in Joshua where he's leading the Israelites out and into the promised land. And it talks about going up and out. And that's really been a good metaphor. I heard it through Christine Kane at a women's event, but it's a good reminder to me that in a growth mindset, we are coming up and out to new things. It doesn't mean we'll hit val we won't hit valleys again, but many people want to stay down and back and they will pull you back if you don't um, prune those relationships, either in the amount of time you spend with them or, you know, how many of those you have. And so we just need to be really careful. Awesome. So as we wrap up, quick reminder, grit is the essential ingredient for long-term success, major impact, and to reach your full potential. When you stop contending, you are wasting your potential. And don't forget, keep your oars in the water and keep hanging with lions who are rowing upstream to ensure you don't end up like the masses going downstream. Absolutely. Thanks for listening today, you guys. We would love it if you would give us a five-star review and share this podcast with family and friends who would enjoy learning more about the Uncommon Freedom principles and what we do here. So thanks for listening to the Uncommon Freedom show. We believe freedom isn't man's invention. It was created by God. You can connect with us at beckandkev.com for more resources to learn biblical principles, essential disciplines, and winning habits that help once average people lead the life they want instead of accepting the life they were given. 